Welcome to another edition of Farpoint Focus. I'm Craig Mathias with Farpoint Group, and today we're on the campus of Seton Hill University in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, to learn about one of the most connected and most mobile universities anywhere. With over 2,100 students, a 200-acre main campus plus several remote sites, and more than 30 undergraduate and 12 graduate programs including business, art, psychology, music, and biology, and with a focus on entrepreneurial opportunities, health sciences, and visual and performing arts, Seton Hill University's IT systems must serve a large, diverse, and demanding user base. But the story here gets a lot more interesting. Every student has a MacBook and an iPad, and it's not unusual to see over 4,000 devices connected to the campus-wide wireless LAN at any moment in time. Based on both wired and wireless equipment from Interasys Networks, Seton Hill practically defines mission-critical networking. IT efforts at Seton Hill are headed by Phil Kamarni, Vice President of Information Technology and CIO for the university. Phil has served as the institutional catalyst for initiatives that have positioned Seton Hill as a leader in strengthening learning through the use of mobile technology. In addition to providing daily support for the university's entire technology infrastructure, he develops new software and website applications and manages institutional use of Facebook, Twitter, blogs, and podcasts. We were able to steal a few minutes from Phil's very busy day to learn a little more about what the university is doing with IT, and especially wireless and mobile. Tell us a little about your operations and core goals for IT here at Seton Hill University. We really have three specific constituencies we really service, students, faculty, and staff. And I think they all look at IT for different reasons. Students definitely want to make it, we want to make it as transparent as, po as possible and as functional and as robust as possible. So the students just want things to work. We utilize technology in our classrooms every day, including the iPad. So whenever they walk into that classroom and turn that device on, they want to be able to get to exactly what they need to get to every time they want to get to it. So that's, you know, that uh, mobility and that um, um, reliability layer for the, for the students is paramount. Uh, staff, we really, they look to us to ease their day-to-day -day work life with either tools we develop here in our department <clears throat> or using technology as best we can to help them get their day-to-day -day work done. And the, the faculty are toughest because they do, they do, everybody wants to have a robust, very reliable network, but they really utilize technology more than anybody. They're teaching with it every day. Let's talk about the architecture of the university network. How are both the core network and the wireless edge structured? Our wireless network is paired off, is VLAN into two segments. We use a thing called fingerprinting that we can do through Interasys' uh, NAC that allows us to move all of our traffic from our iOS devices off onto one VLAN so we can really monitor the use and the quality of that experience as well as all of our Mac uh, uh, Tiger operating system stuff. Goes, X traffic goes over a different VLAN. And then we have all of our windows and guest traffic going off to a third one. So we really monitor you know, even different versions of the operating system so we really can get down to that granular level to see what's going on on our network and really how we can make it better. What were the major inhibitors to success that prompted you to re-architect the network? Well, when I got here in 2009, we evaluated the network. We had a five to seven year old Cisco infrastructure that was wired. We had a lot of bad wiring as well. So we really looked at it at that level. Started with the replacing our, our core to our edge network with all in Terrace Scare. We did evaluate Cisco and some other vendors for both the wireless and the infrastructure, the wired infrastructure, and ended up going with all of an Interis uh, model from core to edge. There's a tendency to look at education as a special case, but how can enterprises who are also dependent upon IT learn from what you've done here at Seton Hill? When I look at corporate right now, it's more of how do we support these bring your own device you know, do we, do, we, do we allow them on our network? How do we control them on our network? What do we do at that level? With our Interasys equipment and the way we've structured our network, we can do that, that same level of security at a different level with, through that one pane of glass. And it's uh, been a very good thing for our students so we don't have to lock them down as much. We can allow them to do certain things that you know, in the corporate world might be a little bit of a, a problem for most managers or most CIOs to to uh, allow that type of traffic on their network. We, we were able to do that and be able to monitor it and really control it as well. What does your roadmap for the network look like going forward? What's next? We're really interested on focusing uh, all of our resources and time here as our staff 
on our network working better than any network in the world. And the rest of it, the infrastructure, will be moved out to that, to that cloud layer piece at a time here over the next year and a half. So we're really gonna have to, that user experience here is gonna be paramount. I think you know, making this network as fast and as highly available as possible and as bulletproof and you know, scalable and redundant, all those great words, that's, what, that's gonna be our key focus and really embracing the cloud. We were also fortunate to be able to sit down with Brian Dawson, Director of Systems and Networks at Seton Hill, to learn about some of the operational issues inherent in running a large-scale wireless network for a truly demanding audience. We asked Brian about the nature of the traffic he's seeing. Uh, they're doing a lot of uh, multimedia. So you're doing um, Facebook, they're doing YouTube. Um, just surfing the web, you know, taking in the experience. That's uh, pretty high demand they put on our network. Um, they're doing that with uh, both the MacBooks and the iPads that we give them in their own personal machines. Uh, they're also doing research, but most of the traffic that they generate is going to be uh, multimedia type stuff, activities. And given the tremendous and again mission critical network load, we wanted to know if the network implementation is meeting Brian's expectations. It's very resilient. Um, we have uh, a good bandwidth between multiple locations. We're looking at doing some link aggregated connections to get even a little bit more throughput because you can never have too much. Um, but uh, it's working out really well. We really uh, have no issues with it. The wireless has been flawless and uh, the wired network's great. We're utilizing a policy manager to try to control the traffic and stop problems you know, at the actual uh, switch port versus trying to control it back at the routers or firewalls. That's really helping us out a lot. Um, so in the Interisys uh, console manager really gives you a lot of visibility of what's happening on the network. So, so you can track down a problem quickly, find out what its MAC address is um, or host name, or you can do searches on any type of criteria you want. So, Large-scale deployments like this one at Seton Hill University require a combination of factors for success. A clear vision, the right products and tools, unified wired wireless networking, and robust, broadly functional network and operations management. The advantages that the university is realizing through their leading application of mobile and wireless technologies are instructive not just in the case of other educational institutions, but also for enterprises and other organizations as well. We've really enjoyed our visit here to Seton Hill University today. For Farpoint Group, I'm Craig Mathias. Thanks for watching.